Welcome to the second part about the circular progress indicator and especially about the circular slider in this video. In case you haven't watched the last video then I recommend you to catch up because it's the basic of this video and I will just continue where we stopped in this last video. So in Android Studio let's switch to code here and go up to our state variables because we need some additional state variables here. First of all, we need a var change angel, which will be our um, change angel when we track. So mutable state of, which is zero by default. Then we have also a track started angel, so where we exactly started the tracking. By remember, mutable state of zero f as well. And then we have a old center value by remember which has the, our initial value as the default value. Oh, well, let's uh, rename this because this name is a little bit confusing. Well, let's call it old position value because um, uh, when we are tracking later, then we always need the old position uh, and do some calculations and add our old position to get the new position. Uh. So the old position is always a little bit behind but is used to calculate the new position with the new raw values. So this is the sense of this state variable. Down here in our canvas modifier, we will have a pointer input and we can pass true here. And in this pointer input, we can then detect track gestures. So detect track gestures, remove this lambda block here and take the parameter list and then we can define different behavior on track start, track cancel, on track end and all that stuff. So we will start with on track start. And here we will get an offset. In here we can then set our track started angel. And now things will get a little bit wild, but I'll try my best to explain this to you. Just let me quickly type this off first and then I will explain this. So Arcus Tangents 2. And the x value will be circle center dot y minus offset dot y. And for the y value, we will pass circle center dot x minus offset dot x. And then we will multiply this with 180f divided by pi and say to float. Okay, all right, what does this actually mean now? All right, okay, let's have a look at the circle on the left, which kind of represents our trackable slider circle in Android Studio. This circle has a circle center, which contains a y value and an x value. And if the user now, for example, presses on this position up here, this is the start track position here, then this value also has an x value. If we go down here, then this will be the x2 value and here will be the y2 value. And now we can kind of calculate a triangle. So if we put a line down here, a line down here and connect them on the set circle center, then we can try a triangle. And we also know the size of two sides of this triangle. So the one side will be our x2 minus x, so minus, and the second side, which is the size of this side here, will be our y2 minus our y. And now we can apply a formula, which is the arcus tangens 2 formula, to calculate this angel here. And this is our start track angel. And we can only apply this arcus tangens 2 function because we know that this here is a, a right angel. And this values, this y2 and y, x2 and x, are these values in Android Studio here, which we will pass into the Arcus Tangents 2 function. And yeah, this is simply it. So we can uh, calculate an angel from a two sides of a triangle if it has a right angel. And uh, the last thing here is just to convert the angel, which we get provided in red, to a decrease angel. And since this function here gives us an angel range from minus 180 degrees 
to 180 degrees, but we want the angel from 0 to 360 degrees, we need to make a little additional calculation here. So we can say track started angel is equal to track started angel plus 180F. And then we also say mod 360. This function here will map our angel from here to the corresponding 0 to 360 angel values. All right, okay, this is it for our onTrack start function. Then we also need to define our onTrack function, which delivers us a pointer input change and an offset. So onTrack is equal to, and here we will uh, just use the change. We don't need the offset here. And we can then calculate our current touch angel because this onTrack function gets called, I think, five to 10 times a second or something like this. So we can say var touch angel is equal to, and then we can copy the same logic from above and put it down here. And in here, we don't have the offset. We have our change dot position dot y. And we also have this down here and the rest no, this does not remain the same. This will be also our touch angel as well as here, like this. And then we can calculate our change angel. So the change angel will be our touch angel minus the old position value times 360F divided by our max value. And let me also explain this, which also needs to be the max value minus the min value because uh, if the min value is not zero, then this wouldn't work here. So um, if this is uh, 100, a range of 100, then we divide 360 degrees by this 100 and then we have 3.6 degrees per value. So each value has uh, represents 3.6 degrees. And then we have here the old position value, which is maybe maybe 80 or something like this. So we have the current progress of 80. Then 80 times the 3.6 degrees for each value is then our current angel. And then we also have the touch angel. And the touch angel maybe is uh, 330. And then we subtract the angel of our current progress and get our change angel. So I hope this uh, also got clear. And now things will get complicated one more time, I promise. This is the last one and yeah, this is a heavy one here. But um, uh, we will get through this and after this uh, we just need to implement the on track end functionality, which is uh, two lines long and then we are good to go to try this out. All right, okay. Now we need to define a threshold uh, and this threshold um, uh, needs to be around our current progress so that the user can just tap on the current progress where the current progress ends. And there you need a little threshold, a minus threshold and a, a plus threshold so that the finger gets recognized if the user really presses on the current progress. So if the progress is on 50%, then the, the bar is on 50% and then it should be only movable if the user actually presses on this 50% bar at the top uh, in case of our circular slider. So we have a well lower threshold, which is equal to our old position value times 300 and 60f divided by max value minus min value, put this in parentheses here, and we also use this value exactly here. So let's make this a well up here. So well current angel is equal to this one, and then we can say current angel, and here we can also say current angel, and then we have a lower threshold, and we will subtract five steps of the relative decrease to our value range. So what does this mean? We can say 360F divided 
bei Max Value minus Min Value times 5. So this again here, we could also make this a var, but I will leave it like this for now. Um, this again is our relative angel for each step from this min value to the max value. So in case of our 100%, this is again our 3.6 uh, decrease. And then we will multiply this by 5. So we will give the user 50 degrees of, um, uh, yeah, of threshold where the finger is still recognized if he presses on the current uh, progress. And then we also have a higher threshold, higher threshold, and here we add this value. So the range will be like 30 degrees in our 100% example. And yeah, if the user taps in a range of 30 degrees around the current progress, then the fingertip gets recognized as a track gesture and then he can track around the progress bar or the slider in our example. So now we can say if track started angel is in our lower threshold to our higher threshold. This means we do recognize the track gesture. All right, okay, if the track is actually recognized, then we can update our position value. So position value is equal to our old position value plus our change angel divided by 360F, which is also divided by our max value minus our min value. And we need to round this to an integer. And did I choose the right one here to round? I guess not like this. So this basically means take our old position value, which is for example 80, and we will add then our change angel. And this angel maybe is 20 degrees or something like this. And then we need to map this angel here with this division to an actual value. And we again used this formula like here and like here. So yeah, um, just make this a uh, value and uh, don't always type this off. And yeah, this was my fault here. And yeah, okay, all right. Um, we can actually try this out, but we first need to invoke this composable. So let's go down here to our preview and let, let's copy this and then go out to our main activity. Inside here, we can remove this default stuff and we will have a box which takes a modifier, fill max size, and we need to import the box here. The background will be dark gray. The content alignment will be alignment.center. And in this box, we can then paste this custom circular progress indicator, which is in our case now a custom circular slider. And let's import size, dp, the orange color and the gray color. And then we can start this. All right, try this out by dragging from 50 to, for example, 19% and let go. And then we track, oh, okay, this does not work. It only works once. I think I know what the problem is because we can just, yeah, we can just track it on our initial 50% and um, move it then. And if we uh, do it like this, uh, somehow the initial value just gets saved. I think this is with our mutable state uh, value. Um, uh, yeah, let's quickly fix this. All right, I found a mistake. This was really dumb here in our canvas modifiers pointer input. We also need to define the on track end function. So on track end, and in here we can say old position value is equal to position value. And then we can also invoke the on position change function and pass our position value. And in our main activity, we could then access it here like this position. And then you could, for example, pass this to a view model and do some processing with it, uh, do something with this position value. 
Okay, all right, then we can relaunch the application. And now it should work. So let's try this out and put this to 21%. And then I track around here at 50%, nothing happens. And when I go to the 20, then everything works quite well. And again, all right, okay. This should be it for this uh, video. And um, there is one problem left, which I will um, quickly show you, but I won't implement here. So if you exceed 100, then it just starts from the beginning and the other way around. If you go from null to 100, then it always um, overlaps kinda. And if you want to avoid this problem, you would need additional logic and the uh, on track functionality. And I already implemented this logic in another project. So uh, let me know if you are interested in this solution. I won't implement this. I won't implement this here because uh, this series of these two videos is already quite long. And yeah, just let me know if you are interested in the solution or if this is fine for you like we did implement it like here all right okay i hope you enjoyed this video and the previous one and i hope you also learned a lot of things and yeah see us in the next video